keeping a finger on the pulse of the nation. We inform, inspire, innovate. Working through the night, we keep the presses running. As Malaysians everywhere go about their lives, in the bustling city that never sleeps, at work, or at home. We're part of your life. Wherever you are. 24 hours, 7 days a week. Workers of all 
manual labor, etc. That's what they know as. But from day one, I realized that Ford was the first people in the world to be on globalized basis and every box is given rice, not made this one, given rice and everything is run by computer system. You know? So actually, if the technology doesn't fall, and if you go around the world, technology falls for all these beautiful economies. And airports also have beautiful values. So why must the port not be the one? So, obsolescence, education, population growth, you need to support business to still produce one. The plan is not to make sure that we continue to build and meet the demand. And send this scheme for workers, which they, if they do faster moves, they get more salary And that's possible for $12 million. Dollars. So I think we want the factors to make us highly productive one. So we like to say that we are among the top five parts in the world in terms of productivity. We have learned from you. We want you to know if you die, if you stop work, your brain will die first. So keep your brain alive. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri G. Yangalingam, founder and chairman of West Sports Holdings. Yang berbahagia, Datuk Sri Wong Chun Wai, managing director and chief executive officer of Star Media Group. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Munar Star for another round of Power Talks. I'm Calvin from Star Media Group, and we're really excited to see you all be here today. To our regular Power Talks guests, welcome back. And for those joining us for the first time, thank you so much for being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Power Talks Business Series presented by Star Media Group is our way of connecting with our readers, and also a chance for us to give readers an opportunity to get up close and personal with high profile business leaders. From inspiring company philosophies to compelling insights, Power Talks covers various topical matters on business and features an exciting lineup of powerhouse speakers who are captains of industries, personalities who have made Malaysia proud with their resounding success and great contributions to their various fields. At the end of the session, there will be a QA opportunity for our guest speaker, Tan Sri Ji and Anugam. And now, allow me to welcome veteran Power Talks moderator and specialist editor of Sarbis, Mr. M. Shanmugam, on stage to introduce our speaker. Anyway, good morning ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Manara Star, to another session of the Star Power Talk Business Series. I think this is the eighth in our series, and you know, we hope to continue many more. An alumni of Industry Malaya told me this. If anyone were to ask Tamshi Kuke, Tamshi Kuke Kim, the historian of Industry Malaya, on what were the job prospects for somebody who wants to take up history, his answer would be, just look at Tan Sri Ji. <laughs> Tan Sri Ji, after finishing up with his Tan Sri Ji, Tan Sri Ji, okay, uh, after finishing uh, his secondary education in uh, RMC, Royal Muslim College, ended in University of Malaya, in the History Department, and he graduated in 1968, had a job in BAT, British American Tobacco. In his own words, he will tell you that he only started learning after he started working. Before that, he was not learning. Okay. Now, in BAT, he was in the marketing team, and, and we all know he was there for a good 20 years, and he ran a lot of uh, very good, fantastic marketing campaigns. Uh, campaigns that associated the product with the masses. When I say masses, I mean really masses. 
the whole country actually. Um, and, and he was one of the early ones who saw that, you know, sporting events was a major, major medium of uh, being associated with the masses. And, and um, yes, and the first opportunity came in 1982, was during the World Cup in Spain. Prior to 1982, I think if many of you remember, uh, we hardly got to watch many World Cup matches live, not like now, you know. Uh, probably if you're lucky, you'll see the semi-finals on RTM 1 and 2 and the finals. Um, then in 1982, there was a campaign, I still remember, where we got Malaysians as a whole, they donated money to help RTM 1 and 2 secure the telecast rights to bring World Cup to Malaysia. And Benson and Hages, at the time, under BAT, Tan Sri Ji, they played a big role. 1986, he took it one step further. He led a high-profile team to bid for the rights to telecast World Cup to Malaysia. It was 1986 World Cup in Mexico. And that was the first time Malaysians as a whole got to watch World Cup. I mean, I'm talking about the entire series. And prior to the World Cup, he even brought in the program called uh, Run Up to the World Cup, where you know you watch teams who are watching, uh, playing games and things like that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was a big event in 1988. I mean, then 1988, he left BAT and then he formed this thing called G Team Consultants. Uh, this was another marketing thing. <laughs> At the time, RTM 1 and 2 were reading, they were reading from a new, a new channel then, it was called TV3. The advertising rights, the advertising company were dropping like crazy, you know, like RTM 1 had seen their, and RTM 2 had seen their rights, their revenue drop from 70 million to 50 million, and they were losing market share. So GT consultants, the mandate was to get revenue up and running again. And that was a team led by Tantri Ji. And they took the revenue right up to 360 million then, by the mid 1990s. And then came West Sports. Now, West Sports was actually, um, it, was private, it was going to be privatized, there was a competitive tender for it. And uh, there, were very, there were many big names there, including Renault, RCB, and things are all very well politically connected. Um, GT bid for it, bid for Westport, and they won. But there was this problem, you know, it's a greenfield port, and I say greenfield port, it's empty, it's wrong here. And uh, port is a capital intensive business where you put your money in, you build the facility, it'll be there for 60 years or so. However, you have to get the ships to come there and collect your boxes, your cargo. And the exporters will not send their cargo, their boxes, to the port unless they know the ships are coming there. So it's a chicken and egg situation. So you have to take a marketing visit to break the whole thing and make the sport what it is today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help join me in welcoming Tan Sri Ji to tell his story on how we build the sport.
power talk. My grandson asked me, what power talk are you the Avengers? <laughs> so the star team is misleading with telling us, I'm no Avenger and I do not have any special powers. Now, as you know, <coughs> Sean alluded a little bit to the, my history. Now, I'm currently the executive chairman of Westports, virtually a retired person. It gives me time to do other things. For example, I put back in the script for Dump Million. Dump Dump Million Time 2. Dump Dump Million Time 2 is to go something like this. There's a history class. The teacher said, give me liberty or death. Who said this? And the Dump Dump replied, Patrick Henry. Then the teacher said, government of the people, Government of the people, by the people, <coughs> for the people. Who said that? And the subtitle replied, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Right. The teacher then said, you should be ashamed of yourself. The Indian knows more about you than And one loud of said, screw the Indians. <laughs> and the teacher said, who said that? And the top dog was crying, you're not custer in my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 She said, very angry. And the students, and who she, the students screamed, who oh, should be a screw. The teacher said, who said that? <laughs> now, maybe we should do a case study on Malaysia huh? and what we will find that politically we speak up. There's a young, the Prime Minister is going lift with a young manager and the Prime Minister said, you are late and the young manager said, yes, we are late. <laughs> the Prime Minister said, do you know who I am? say, yes sir, but do you know who I am? <laughs> the Prime Minister said, no. And he said, thank God for that. <laughs> and he bought that. <laughs> <laughs> the Malaysian economy is, I think, a give and take economy. The father has only cows and he wanted to give his sons in different proportions. He gave the elder son half the second son one third and the third son one line and they called on how to divide 17 by these proportions. The uncle came in and said he wants a house and he gave them his cow so now they have total 18. 18 divided by half is a nine, by one third is six and one nine is two so total 17. <laughs> And I'm going to say, give me back my cow. <laughs> in the social setup, we quarrel, we argue, we fight, but we agree on consensus and we remain friends. Three ministers of Central Island blaming each other until they found a genie. And they gave them, the genie gave them three wishes. The first minister take me back to Johor. Second minister said, take me back to Penang. The third minister who was not paying attention, which is not normal, <laughs> he said, where are my friends? I want my friends back. <laughs> so that's my pastime. <laughs> my early years, I grew up in Korokula, federal center school in football, rugby, athletics and hockey. And that's what Shan was trying to tell you. I'm more of a sportsman than a student. I was a sort of scout. But this gave me good qualifications to enter RMC. I don't go to RMC because they provided free hostel, free food, and books. 
but I'm more interested in the fifty dollars a lounge a game. I represented RMC in football but in athletics, but did not do well so well in studies. And RMC allowed me to go to upper six because of my skills in sports. <laughs> then I got a place to study history in New Zealand Rail. But unfortunately my father passed away and didn't have money to go through the second and third year. I also had three younger brothers in school. And with three hundred three dollars in my pocket, I bought five copies of the middle way. And entered the first of Azul and won. <laughs> and managed to continue my studies and support my brother's education. Uh, why do you study history? It was the fastest way to open a degree. There's no need to study. <laughs> Involve in student union activities and chance for part-time work and graduate in 68. Why MTC? Because MTC pays $200 for the interview. <laughs> And I eventually chose it because the MTC's director, personal director, went to my house and convinced my mother. But as you know, my mother was saying, you're joining a cigarette company? That's impossible. But after the white man talked to her, she was impressed. And I joined MTC because they were big in sports on the ship. Best of all, I would take up badminton and golf and everything else. So, I get a box seat to all these simple ones. <coughs> but history was no use to MTC. <laughs> so I started studying marketing. And I didn't study in industry as some said to you, but I studied after the industry. And that's one very important statement I'll make to all of you, is don't stop studying after you go to the industry. Because that's the worst thing you can do. Right? So fortunately I didn't study in the industry, but I was studied since then and haven't stopped even until now. Okay. I joined MDC in 68, became marketing director. The signal company space advertising threats. And so we took over it's called Parara Advertising. For example, the venture is still the gold ad, won eight gold medals worldwide and was successfully used during the World Cup and in the So we were requested something of the total 
but it's Shantri who was the tenders and but there was a distance. We did come back from Harvard Business School and my family with Michael Porter's competitive strategy. And we copied Michael Porter's book and submitted to the government. <laughs> and when we won the award, they said me, don't talk, we just go and do it. In 1994, we were a newspaper of the law. We had escaped the primary to progress of the past, and we belonged to a new dynamic in 2004. But fortunately for me, I won a binoculars that can see the future. Ladies and gentlemen, ports. 95% of world trade is by sea. All the trains and the other modes of transportation can only take 5% of the traffic. 65% of the time to spend at the box. It means nothing to you, but imagine you had to turn to London and you have to stop at the present, but you spend 65% of the time at the airport. So anybody who can reduce the sitting, waiting time or wait to spend at the, at the port has to make some money, right? We were the largest spending, spending largest really nation. But Singapore was increasing the prices every year. And to competitors from the of the nation, there was a question. And don't forget, the inventory of the nation goes in up to the And there were so many things we were grind for Singapore. They had a frequency and certainty. For example, you want to go to Norway today, you have to go to Singapore. You can't go to any other place in Singapore. And that meant by frequency and certainty. They had a capacity to handle it. And they had no customers. The traders and traders were all in Singapore. We grew all the rubber, the rubber was traded uh, in Singapore. Uh, and so and all that. So the trading was all done in Singapore. And more importantly, in terms of traders, we grew all the pepper. All the pepper is sold in Singapore. So that was the second concern. Then there were feeders and borders who were all based in Singapore. And most of the feeders were actually in Singapore, but they had some agents in Malaysia. Finally, FOB and CIF. Everything we sell, we sell them including freight. And everything we buy, we buy including freight. So Malaysians were virtually oblivious with the trading business that's going on. Right? Now, the cost of going through Malaysia to Singapore, at that time, they the say the trade was $300 billion. And they made this 5% commission, it will be $15 billion. And if there was $5 billion in terms of investment, then it was three books for three thousand, three hundred, three million boxes for thousand five. It means a total of 2.5 million. And the invisible losses of the country then was 20 billion times. Now, when we do, when we get involved in port business, etc., or any business we want to get into, the important thing is to do research. So we did research. Why did Singapore become the largest port in South Asia? And in some million boxes? Because they catered for the inefficiencies in the region. Like Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, so we really cater for that. Similarly, why did Hong Kong become the largest port in, in that area? Because people were scared to go to China, Chinese ports. Remember at that time, they were going to go to Malaysia, they were scared, so they catered for China. Similarly, the largest port in South Asia was Colombo. And that too, they catered for South Asia, like Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. They do suffer the report there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might say this is all because of the history. All these three ports were set up by the British. They all did free. They catered for the regional bureaucracy. And they didn't have capitalized policy because they were islands. All right? But essentially, in any business or anything you do, you arbitrage of the inefficiencies of your competition. And the arbitraging between the region was so enormous 
these three important things of this world. Now you might say that was in the past. But no, let's look at today. Dubai has no oil, but they have made themselves a duty-free centre and made a huge financial and maritime centre. But you know why we call it the Middle East? It's not in the middle. So why we call it Middle East? Right? I only found out lately. It's called Middle East because it's four hours from London and Paris and four hours from Hong Kong and, Hong Kong and Tokyo. <laughs> I don't know how they discovered this four hundred years ago. <laughs> then ports. Ports are a four hundred year old industry with archaic practices and they were to be junk camps. And airports were a new industry. So from day one I told my staff, I know nothing about ports, I know a lot about airports. So today onwards you guys are going to run an airport and not a port. So, and as I showed you in the last video just now, we, one of the first things we did was, we became a garden port. Because we realized we do not employ uh, Guam, but we employ intelligent workers. And why do I say intelligent workers? The prime mover driver is given an instruction by computer where to go. The Tony Clark is told where which part of the ship to put in. The kick lane driver is also told how to fill the box and put it into the slot. And when they go to the yard, the RG driver is also instructed by computer as to how to do it. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to port business, if you handle 8 million boxes, imagine they all have names. Right? So they all have numbers. And one of the things we believe in our staff is everybody may not be fully educated, etc., but they all know, and know numbers. If they don't know numbers, they don't know how to change their dollars. <laughs> so, and we have clean operations, we operate by airport standards. And that's one reason why we make sure the port we replace. I'll give you an example. In previous week, we had a lady and he told your father, you get to work in a port, your father will go to Zerg. Right? So, but some of the changes we made in the port for ourselves, you won't believe this when I'm doing this type of port business. The customs only work 9 to 5. And at all they work 24 hours. Okay? And only from the port was only was 95% and they have worked for 75 percent So now they work 24 hours. <laughs> and uh, there are a lot of rules and ask between whether they can or not. And all the rules are all that. But you see 24 hours now. And I'm not sure but I'm uh, there are a couple of parts in Malaysia where the custom still works only one, uh, works only nine to five. Right? Immigration at the airport, has immigration going wait for the customers. At the port, they used to wait for the immigration to come and clear the ship before they can start work. All right. But we have the story short. Now we get three seven days fish clearance for the ships shipping crew. Now, government agencies, we invited the Ministry of Agriculture to set up a branch of the exam. The vehicle inspection was a lot of Tanaka research centers. And Tanaka agreed to give us three cables so that any one of them uh, breaks down, we won't have to interrupt our services. Like, we need to go on our MRT services. <laughs> and also, they should always adapt to it. Now, my story about this is, is we all can grumble for the government, but we can also get them to go off. Let's call the container module has grown from 200,000, 20,000 to 9.1 million in the last <coughs> year. And in terms of market share, we also grown from 1 to 76 percent over the last 15 years. And Portland was 
25th largest oil in the world in 1990 and it has now become the third largest oil in the world. But one of the things you may be surprised to hear is that the top six countries in the world were empty containers China, USA, Singapore, Hong Kong, Korea, and Malaysia. We have more than 50 major mines, 35 gigawatt breakers, and 650 million investors. But more importantly, last time only 30% of our cargo went direct to the country you want uh, to import it, export it to. Today, 75% goes directly. So that saves a lot of time. Going indirectly means spending time in other ports. For example, if you have to send everything to Singapore, you will spend another week. And another week, that's it. Well, now we can do it direct to 75% of the policy in the world. Now, vessel productivity. This is something we do internally for the staff to get them more excited. And, but they have produced the world building record. At one time, we could do only 140 minutes per hour. Then we moved to 300 moves per hour, to 600. So the last two years, last four years, uh, 2014, they did 395 moves per hour. Right? And these are the in, 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 uh, instances where we motivate the staff and turn them to the third floor so that they themselves know how fast they can move. But another little known fact in the world is that the Portland tariff is $60, Jakarta is $110, Burma is 190 Japan $250, Europe 250 and USA is 25 So one of the cheapest ports in the world is Portland. Now, West Coast today is top five in terms of productivity and excellent staff in all the extent, but it's at the cost of $10 million. That's the amount we pay in terms of incentives to the South. We won about 50 awards so far, but I won't tell you about it. One of them was the port of the new millennium. We did this ad to tell our customers the port of the new millennium is in West Coast. But if you look at the ad itself, you will not have to close your ad thing. We said, port of the new millennium. That means we have another thousand years to create the port. <coughs> and we want the best of the public sector to go to the war. Then, private building award, landscaping award in 2003. But also we want the human resources minister award uh, for best of the year. And once more, the, the gold prize for international ports uh, awarded, awarded by the International Port and Association of Ports and Harbors for IT development. But most of all, we also want to show the work, but not only one, but four. <laughs> so, now, how is this achieved? Two good type Mahal. All of you say, Shah Jahan. But fortunately for me, my mother told me it was the locals. <laughs> okay, thank you. You are Sami Veru, good type Mahal. He'll tell you, my name is Let me ask you, I don't know whether anybody can get back the guys who pull Taj Mahal to pull it again. Right? Now, the other thing is, if you did research among 10,000 students and ask them what do you want to do when you grow up, they tell you they want to be lawyers, doctors, engineers, pharmacists, architects. Worst they say is what we have airline pilots. But nobody wants to vote in the court. <laughs> so how do we get these people? Ninety-nine percent have never seen the court. Put them at six months on the job training, especially military and police type of training, and send them to the art camps in terms of KKB, Zola, to have them to train. And the staff strength has grown from 550 in 96, 96 
to 4,300 today. So all of you and I as the marketing man who are thinking the customer's king. Ever since I went to airport, I changed it slightly. The staff is king, the customer is free. <laughs> <coughs> now, this is best practices. A lot of people think lot of water. Productivity issues are being very important. Everybody pays lip service. But I don't think many people know how to practice it or don't really know how it works. To me, if a worker can do 200 moves, 20 moves per hour, he can do 600 moves. At 25 moves per hour, he can do 900 moves. And think about Cape, he can successful, but he can do 25 moves per hour. And today in Westport, our staff can do 30 more moves per hour. Right? Now you have a choice. Either you have staff who can do up to 1,200, or you can build a facility that costs 850 million. And that is a simple choice. So the question is, how much incentive do you pay your staff rather than build a infrastructure? Now, <coughs> you want to be the best employer, but that means making sure we give the best benefits. And which means we will tell our staff compare the benefits you can or anywhere else and then we will match it. Alright? Incentive training the growth program. We have a joint consultancy company in terms of issues and extended family concept and we have major also community projects. Renewal wage. Now keep this quiet because I don't need to go around telling everybody. <laughs> then <coughs> renewal wage in Westports Ties into a passion to learn and excel. Suddenly, around this and this and this, 2006, benefits bonus at the price $600 and the total monthly cost is $2,200. And we have 100% local workforce. I remember Pana in Sana, we played a bit of a in uh, Putrajaya, and you see all the key issues we must achieve by 2020. And I said, by 2020, the minimum salary must be 2020. <laughs> <laughs> now, we give staff a lot of roles, computer role, housing role, bank role, WSC role, and two months advance. The two months advance, we don't have to ask them, we never ask them the questions. Relations are shy people. When a mother needs surgery or a sister getting married, they need money in a hurry. So, you can do not around the problems. But people tell me, what if they run away? I said, people when they run away. Right? Then we had a problem with loan sharks. And who are charging 10% per month. And the pressure from the staff to pay. Clear, clear. They come to work, the road chart is waiting outside. They go home, the road chart is waiting there as well. And remember a few years ago, we had a big problem in terms of road charts. And there was no way to pay. But it, 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 it was not proper prudent. We didn't look after this issue. Imagine the staff can just change boxes and make sure your boxes get lost. And they will steal. They will do all kinds of things if they just pay on the road chart. Okay? So that's why we call it the road chart and we pay them off and then make sure that our staff is deducted from the staff salary. But we didn't want to carry on too many times because the same guys were getting involved here. Right? So. Now, in terms of medical benefits, we give first class medical benefits. <coughs> limited us in terms of uh, schedules, hospitalization in, in private clinics, etc. It also provides medical for dependents, antenatal, and prolonged expenses. Now, I believe very strongly medical benefits is very, very important because two reasons. When they need it, they can't afford it. Right? All, all staff are like that. Right? But, I also feel assured that nobody will abuse it. You won't want to come to the hospital and say, 
เราเคยจบลงไปแทนจบลงไปแทนสุดาโอเคโซพี่ผู้ not u s e but use b e t t e r something and staff discipline is very important we fortunate again we know my fees go a t o the prison and have to go f o r s and some of the doctors in Mumbai have told me for the country you know excellent staff a l t h e m you want MC they say no and this was better <laughs> Now, we we have also identified we have 150 staff with PhD. PhD means I was just a doctor. After six months, we found only 135 with PhD due to the gym, diet, medicine, and also talking to the wives and telling them how to help your husband to work up any of the issues with PhD. Now we hire people to learn, learn in Excel with no sign of emotional conflict, and we offer we also do brain attitude o r brains, and we are famous for teaching topics how to run and topics how to fly. Now we listen to our people. We have many management o n s u l t a n t in the company, workers to see back problems, the g u r u concept. All right. The g u r u concept means each. Each of our managers is given about 20 staff, and they are responsible for the 20 staff, and they get feedback from the 20 staff on issues that are important to them. And the key issue is instant response to complaints. We cannot have a complaint to be there for a couple of months before we solve it. <coughs> we have a high performance culture, productivity based on incentives, performance based on. Performance based improvement and bonus, and also reward for exceptional contributions. Now, the c h a r p e c t i v e of this report is we are not interested in a lot of good ideas, we just want to make sure any of the ideas are well implemented. Create leaders at every level, teach people management skills, so t a i t until we find the best fit. Now, in response, we try to tell everybody. Everybody is your wife, your mother, your sister. <laughs> Treat them carefully, especially new employees. And therefore, we started something called the party system, where all of them go to work together as a family. Then, in the end, which comes first, best employer or best employee? If you want to be the best employer, then you get the best employee. And then, if you're the best employee, you won't get the best employee. You won't get the best employee. So, it's an interchangeable thing. Now finally, in Pula Vista, one of the key issues in Pula Vista is we look after the orphans and the shadows, the handicapped and the aged. But more importantly, we have sponsored spon three of the 20 t r u s t schools in Malaysia. And we will make sure that these t r u s t schools, the education system in these schools is very good and uh, the teachers are good, etc. Because that's where our future employees will come from. There's a tax issue. I like to say that we are very famous. The country we donated something to them for tsunami, for Pakistan earthquake, so now we donated. Bosnia also we donated. But to, think, to me, tsunami is o u t o u t i n g tsunami every day. Right? And I like to tell you all. That fundraising dinners a l s o three names. 50% goes to the hotel, 30% to the organizer, 5% to the VIP, and 5% to the focus. Right? Now, the last thing I want to say is that we have to be very careful. The issue with is the p o r t industry or the administration of the p o r t industry is that we are a chain. It's not the shipping line, the shippers, the polyester, the foreign orders, and the port. But we can only be as strong as the strongest. Think of the chain as the weakest thing. So we are dependent on them. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there are new groups of people who are becoming more independent. For example, the post office doesn't have all these things. DHL doesn't practice these things. They have total service. And FedEx also has a total service. They have to be moved to t h e m Now, when you have extra capacity, you have counted on the screen. And the auditors will say you have this capacity, and the management consultants and the 
lectures, etc. You will say we have underutilized assets. While investors will store supply and labor. If you don't build, they won't come. It's as simple as that. Capacity, ladies and gentlemen, is around the clock in terms of capacity. Alright? And if you run about daily only, you know whether the country has enough capacity. <coughs> then to traffic, as you know, the capacity must be there between 7 and 9 and uh, 5 to 7 p.m. Yeah. But capacity really will be known on Friday afternoons many times. Then there's a big issue between when we say you want to get your people involved or you want to get your people in, uh, participate. There's a big difference. A farmer is retiring and he decides to give and the animals decide to give him a present. So like everybody else, they set up a committee for the chicken and the pig. The chicken makes noise and pig rumbles all the time. <laughs> so then they sit down and agree. After our given, that we we'll give him bread free breakfast every day, and every free breakfast means egg and bacon. And that's when the pig said, You are participating, I am involved. <laughs> Best practices nothing is sacrosanct. You have to challenge every issue and remove legacy issues. We believe in being transparent, we encourage information sharing. And all biddings, all exercises, our attendance and response are through an e-bidding system. Because we want to earn the trust of our partners, shareholders, customers, and employees. And there should be no doubt in anybody's mind that we are a transparent company in terms of business. Now, what's the crisis? I think one of the, one of the Chinese guys told me, crisis means crazy. It's opportunity, right? Now, we've had a lot of crises around the world, and, but we, our response progress has been like this. You know why? Because for 50 years, containers have been growing for uh, 50 years, 10 to 10 over 50 years. Right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest to you, in terms of education, the world is educated more people in the last 50 years than it has educated in the last 5,000 years. But more education means people want to buy a house, they want to buy aircon, they want to buy a refrigerator, they want ovens, etc. Okay? Then, optimism. And I think uh, we live in a world where optimism is more important than and we have to replace it. So as long as you replace it, I can go to containers. Alright? And especially you explain this new technology. Last time you had black and white TV sets, then you had color TV sets, then you had slim TV sets, all kinds of changes taking place. Every time you change your TV set, I get one more dose. But more importantly, this. <coughs> Ten phones. One time you had one phone in the house and one phone in the office. Or one phone in the public is ten phone. But now you have an F4 each. And you know what percentage of handbook in the country? 120%. Alright? But that's not important. If you have only one handphone, I have one container. But if you change your handphone three times a year, I have six three containers. Yeah. <laughs> Alright? <coughs> now, that's what success. We learn prediction, best practices around the world. We are fortunately, we have Hinchin Chiaoping from Hutchinson, from Rinashi, and here has two old about 25, 45 ports around the world. So we send our staff to study the best practices in all of them. And so we steal ideas in their good, right? But 30 cents came from management. And every time you can tell it with the ID reservation, that 50 cents of the ideas came from the workers themselves. And this is by weekly submissions. We do weekly appraisal and we don't believe in uh, annual appraisal. We believe in daily feedback and contact reports 
and you use WhatsApp to use your social media, and the story of the dinosaur. For example, if a mosquito is attacking you on the prime, your brain will send a message to the brain and say, to the last time, take your hand and bang the brain mosquito. All that will take you. How long does it take? Within a second, right? Everything moves and you will destroy the mosquito. But if you are a dinosaur and it was hung in the tail and it takes a message three days to the brain and three days come back, <laughs> then you know what it happens, right? So you can either be a WhatsApp company or you can be a dinosaur company. And then there were one of the issues that I found out over the years of working is everybody majors in terms of the cost of doing something. Right? To me, the cost of doing something is important, but more important is the cost of not doing it. Right? We have to make sure that we know what we are doing, but it's important to know whether we can do it or not. And also it doesn't matter who gets the credit, we have to go as a team. What, why do I say team? And I believe in team. And I am more interested in thought. But let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with that because who are the most expensive managers in the world? Football team managers. <laughs> and they don't play for 90 minutes. You know, if you support team manager, you can't play. You prepare the team and you and you prepare the team before and after and before and we prepare for an injury from out of all players and also plan for next year's team. So, the football team also has clear lines of, of SOP and the team. the team. Captain is appointed the team lead. Corner kicks don't need a top of the division. And penalties don't need a top of the division. Orders, orders is automatic. So, if you have to train your staff to operate in a fashion that they know what to do in every set of their system. We have weekend sessions for four improvement projects and not the um, <coughs> we, we do call it brainstorming session, we call it storm the brain session and, and propose ideas not to be. Ladies and gentlemen, with the depth of water and world traffic for welfare and good productivity, it will be the hallmarks for response. So the biggest threat to response it's not competition, it's competition. And so everybody in Westport has had to read books that teach you on how to discuss problems of the company, especially the book called Good to Great, Seduced by Sutter, How the Mighty Fall, and especially how the business school programs and uh, details in terms of how to make sure you do not come from business. A satisfied customer is best for our society. And this is so MBWA means management by watering and all. It's very important, but it's best illustrated by a doctor guy who had heart problem. The doctor told him, how can you cover your employee's path that walk to our seat? He did that on a daily basis. He met employees on the way and discussed issues and problems with them. And he was aware of all the latest issues of problems and during meetings he knows the meeting and has solutions for everything to come up with. And he was appointed managing director. But he still takes his walk down the place. So, what is important? The doctor's advice, MBWA, all the three employees. Now, communication is the key. And a lot of people don't and cannot follow communication in terms of health. Pay lip service communication, but don't make it a hallmark of their of their company's position. Now, I'll give you an example. Three year old lady went to buy a gift. Each paid ten dollars. But the manager said these are regular customers, so give them a discount of five dollars. And the shop assistant returned one dollar to each of the ladies and pocketed the two dollars. <laughs> Okay, now let me repeat this. Three old ladies for entire present. Each paid $10. Shop listener gave them $5 discount. 
Então, meus amigos, todos os dias, eu vou dar uma olhada para o meu amigo, 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 <laughs> okay. The answer is very simple. Manager took twenty five dollars, the ladies got three dollars, the officer took two dollars, total. The way I presented to you, that it misled you. So that's what we do in terms of communication on a daily basis. Now, staff professor, I mean, professor and star editor, man in the train, they have no books, no magazines, neither the start of conversation. Professor gives the long tail profile, the star editor gives a short profile of himself. Then the doctor, uh, the professor said, let's start the game. So I agree, correct answer, I give you one dollar. And the star editor said, no, because you're a professor, you pay one dollar, but if I can answer you, I pay you only 50 cents. Peruvian. <laughs> then they started the game. The editor asked the first question. Maybe it's mine for your sake. The time you turn the professor has a If the professor loses, he pays one dollar. If the editor loses, he pays only 50 cents. So the editor asked the first question, what to find the American animal that you fly? The professor put an answer, and so he paid the dog, the editor won the dog. The editor also said, I also don't know the other side. Then the My wife lost the credit cards, but I did not report it. So she spent less than 50 cents. <laughs> Then two months afterwards, I made a report. The guy asked me why he's reporting now. Because the thief's wife is easy. <laughs> my wife and I were sipping wine. I said, my wife is sipping wine with my wife is happy. And I said, I love you very much. I do not know how I'm to love you. And my wife is careful with me. So I said, is that you or your wife talking? <laughs> and I said, it's me talking to the wife. <laughs> My wife uses a lot of anti aging methods, cosmetic, expensive cosmetic, and spend hours applying the product. Then she turned to me and said, how do I do it? And has 15 years, the face from 35. And the body is 25 years old. And my grandson turned around and said, Grandma, I said, it's not good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you want to be happy, you want to be happy for a day, go for a few picnics. For a week, go on vacation. For a month, get married. For a year, in a reverse. If you want to be happy for a lifetime, then enjoy, learn to love. Learn to love what you do. Now, <coughs> every rumor will last under the rest of rumor. I need to tell the staff and producers because you find that everything you do for So, similarly in life, every problem will last under the next one. Right? And nothing in life is never lose it. <laughs> Hope in life. Because one day they'll turn it off. <laughs> Would you kindly remain seated while we prepare the stage for the Q&A session? Welcome to...
to the port of the new millennium in the spirit of Robinson Duoplo Duoplo. Captain Soren to Westport, ETA 1600. Welcome to Westport, Captain Soren. Cleared to dock. Berth G22 assigned. Thank you, Westport. Docking in eight minutes. Captain Soren, clearance at 300 boxes per hour. Thank you. Confirm turnaround at 2400. Confirmed. Have a nice day, sir. Once again, thank you, Dan Street, for the informative and inspiring session. <coughs> May I invite Mr. Shanmugam to join Dan Street G and the Lingam on stage for the Q&A session. Okay, well, hello everybody, once again. Now it's question time. Um, the normal rules apply. Just state your name, where you're from, and uh, try to ask questions. If you want to do, when you send proposals and all, I need, MC said that you can send three emails, <laughs> just pass the emails. Okay. Uh, okay, we have got some questions. Yeah. My colleague there will send them back. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, morning, that's it. Uh, my question is, my name is Amir Shafiq. Uh, my question is, why did you pick the Dolphin as Westport's iPhone? Thank you. 
Good question, no? <coughs> the dolphin actually represents the fastest, intelligent, transparent animal in the world. So that's why we're looking for an animal that will be transparent, intelligent, and fast. So, and that will be my daughter loves it, dolphins. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Still the back there? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Tachi. Uh, yeah, given such a great speech, I'm very uh, passionate when I listen to your speech. My question is, uh, <coughs> the academics used to say that transshipment containers are very, inelast uh, very elastic. We know very well that Tuas is coming up with a brand new terminal with a capacity of what, almost 60 million TUs over the next couple of years. How, does, uh, how do Malaysian ports deal with these uh, threats from uh, Tuas, the petrol terminal? Thank you. You're, you're from? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, my name is Halil. I'm from NMIT. Okay. All right. Okay. Good question. So I just want to tell you. That's the feeling Malaysians had from 1970 to 1990. How do we compete with Singapore? And everybody is transshipping out of Singapore. Now, the important thing about transhuman is that <coughs> when a ship transships in West Coast, it unloads cargo for the rest of the region. And then you can pick up your cargo. But if it doesn't unload other people's cargo, you cannot pick up your own cargo. So that's the value of transhuman. Now, <coughs> Singapore, when, when I first started, had about 12 million boxes. Today they have 30 million. But that doesn't stop us from going to 10 million boxes. Right? Now, most importantly is, the shipping lines will themselves tell you, they don't believe in a monopoly. All right? They need competition. Right? So, <coughs> it's better it's in their interest that we had an alternative. Now, we created two alternatives. One is PTP and Westport. For Westport, we became an alternative to most shipping lines. Yeah? So, they major, they use it mostly. But in terms of, we can say that Singapore is going to do this, do that, and everything else. But that doesn't, that stop, doesn't stop us from building an airport or building an airport. We need the infrastructure ourselves. And the important thing I want to tell you is the transhuman is the hallmark of our achievement. <coughs> we have about 3 million local boxes, but 7 million boxes from the region. That means the shipping line love to come to Westport to unload their cargo and re re configure their ships. So why do they love to do that? Because the past standards have changed. And I'm telling you again, for me, transhuman plays a very important role because unless they unload their cargo, they cannot take our cargo. And taking our cargo is more important to us than anything else. Okay? Thank you. Uh, yes, that answer your question. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I say your name. Good morning, Tansu. My name is Pray from uh, Subang. Uh, before I ask my question, just congratulate Tansu for the wonderful presentation. Among the three speakers, I think you're the best. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. My question is maybe uh, I think uh, there's a saying of uh, talking of a Thai government uh, to cut through. Uh, the, the land and then allow the West uh, Pavilion's uh, ship to ship through the Kra, uh, the Kra project. <coughs> the Kra project. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think it will happen one day? And what's the impact on the uh, West Port by then? I must be careful, I should, shouldn't talk negative. <laughs> but, yeah. it's sorry to the, uh, I'm a history student, you see. So, <laughs> I heard about a car canal when I was in primary school. <laughs> All right. And we talked and talked and talked again. 
you know, last five years ago I heard it. I mean, when Taksin was around, uh, he was going to build it with Chinese money, etc. But these are ideas, these are theories. They'll carry on forever. I can tell you now that as the North Pole is, is um, it's getting warmer, the shipping lines are going to travel to the North Atlantic, I mean, the Arctic area, you see. But what is the Panama Canal and what is the Cis Canal? Panama Canal goes around, Cis Canal is built to go around the whole of South America. So is Swiss Canal built to go around the whole of Africa. Right? But to cross the Swiss Canal, one crossing will cost you 100,000 US. Right? So, shipping lines prefer to pay them because otherwise you got to go around the whole of Africa. Right? So, in this, in this case, what do you try to avoid going through Malaysia? Right? Now, who, who is going to you know, use a cargo? Who wants who want to avoid Southeast Asia? And not only Malaysia, but the whole of Southeast Asia. You have to go to cut it across and go across. It must be the trade between Singapore, I mean, India and India. Right? Also, maybe the European trade direct to China. So, if that's the case, how much are you prepared to pay for using the canal? If you have to pay 100,000 for every crossing, is 100,000 more expensive or going around Malaysia is more expensive? These are the considerations. And finally, I do not know anybody who has got that kind of money to build the canal. <laughs> so, I cannot see, but I must warn you, it's the idea has been alive for 50 years. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Good morning, Tansri. It's very uh, exciting and a very honored to actually join you in this Power Talks. My name is Rahima. I'm from, um, from Give Lab Network, uh, based in Shah Alam. Okay, um, basically being a business uh, person yourself, uh, going from history, uh, history students and everything, a sportsman, and now you are actually become a founder and everything. And how do you actually get away? With, I mean, uh, give your influence uh, to your influence your uh, your staff from the bottom to to the management level in terms of your leadership and the values that uh, in West Sports. How how it inspires them. Influence, actually, influence, influence. For, for them to actually follow your your values and everything. Maybe you should ask the HR manager to tell you that. The answer is simple. When you see me in my sports, I wear a t-shirt. Right? I don't have a batik or suit and everything else. And the staff will tell you when you see me. When they came to see me, they, they saw me in a t-shirt. And as far as my employees are concerned, they can approach me anytime. Right? So essentially you make yourself make yourself humble, make yourself approachable, and make yourself uh, make make them feel that they are wanted. And also more importantly, you should have discussion with them. I continue as a chairman, a executive chairman, but the one thing I never stopped is meeting the employees. And I have a weekly session with the auto workers, and they tell me directly right, what is, what's going on, and I know exactly what to do about each of those situations. So, we cross the employees, it's not cannot be substituted. It's something very, very important. And I know it's very difficult for a lot of people to do that, but it, there's no substitute for that. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Thank you. Is it on me? 
Uh, thank you very much, Tan Sri, for a very inspirational talk. Uh, I'm Agnes. I run a uh, business management firm for the private aviation sector uh, for the last 13 years. Uh, my question is, uh, I have been uh, going through ups and downs, uh, and uh, the test is actually uh, when I'm down. My question to Tan Sri is that, uh, have you gone through those ups and downs, and uh, during your down, how do you manage to overcome uh, the challenging period? Thank you. Oh, don't worry about my ups and downs. <laughs> I have went many more downs than ups. <laughs> right? Like, um, like my, when my father, my father passed away, he said down anyway, so continue studying or not continue studying. And then when the, uh, when was it? 98 crisis. That's when I found out the banks are ruthless people. <laughs> <laughs> they lend you money like crazy before the crisis and after the crisis, they want only the company that's successful to pay. Those are successful, they cannot pay. <laughs> so they wanted to pay back. So they were not pay back. But fortunately for me, Dita Singh came in and he was, he was willing to uh, take a shareholding belong to other partners and he was rescued us in their times. Now, there's a crisis every now and then. Right? I don't know, in Malaysia also we have so many crises. <laughs> But I don't bother about them and I don't concern about them. And I think the more, more important thing is you will have to keep faith and it will turn around one day. Like the video I showed you, you know? <laughs> so, uh, maybe you can check your storage to find out what's wrong with you. <laughs> But the life will be full of ups and downs, okay? It's how you manage, how to uh, get over it. But I think sometimes the best thing to do is sleep on it. Yeah. <laughs> when you wake up, you may not be there. <laughs> <coughs> okay, yeah, I mean, yes, in the end. Yeah. Good morning, Tatsri. Um, <clears throat> it has been a pleasure listening to your talk. Uh, I'm Turiya from University of Malaya. I'm one of your super, super juniors. Uh, I have a question. Uh, speaking of up and downs, what was the uh, career mistake that you did that gave you the biggest lesson? Question is one of the mistakes. Yes. What was the career mistake that he did in his life that yeah. gave us one of his biggest lessons? Career mistakes. I had only three careers. <laughs> I went from, from MDC to GT to West Falls. But I tell you, every stage of my of that stage, everybody think everybody thought it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Except me. And I left MTC, everybody said, why are you doing MTC, marketing director? How can you get a multinational job? It's one of the best, best jobs in the country, etc. And my brother-in-law came and brushed with me for two days. You know? <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. So, that was one. And then when you go into GT, you only join GT, you join RTM. <laughs> right, that, that place is full of skeletons and cobwebs, man. <laughs> no, I mean, and then when you join Westford and we'll start Westford. What? Westford? Portland is already there. And Singapore. And I can tell you the word. Still my nose is people quite well. There were two guys who came to see me and they studied the port also very well. And they turned around and said, this is a madman. <laughs> There's no way this is going to work. You know what I mean? So, I had my regrets, but other people's regrets. <laughs> yeah, the other question. 
Uh, we'll come back. We'll come back. Good morning, Tanjay. My name is Gordon. Uh, I have this question about the career move. Uh, you have marketing hit before with uh, the English Black or something. Ah, PAT. PAT, yeah. And then you went into your own consultancy. Now, what was the inspiration? Uh, I, can, I, I can foresee the link between PAT and uh, you going to your own consultancy and helping out TM out. What inspired you to go into a totally 180 degree turn in the career move? I mean, what inspired you from <coughs> RTM to Westport directly? This, for me, is a 180 degree turn. What made you do this? What made him go into the port business when he was in advertising? It, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, whether, yeah. whether it was in Westport or the airport, <laughs> but it was a 180 degree turn. Okay. MTC <coughs> made a big mistake. They sent me to Howard Business School. <laughs> <coughs> and when I went to came out from Howard, I said, why should I work for another man in another country? <laughs> and when I was in Howard, they said, this happens to all Howard students. 30% leave, 40% leave the company, 20% leave their wives. <laughs> And 30% leave the present. <laughs> so I chose the retail first. And uh, so they moved from MTC to 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 Port. Yes, to Ports. Yeah. Very simple. In 1996, 95, 96, 97. We were brought into such a great land. Then Astro was launched. And they gave an asked me whether I would join Astro. And I had to make a decision. But you could see clearly that Astro is going to go back to daylight sort of everybody. And they didn't only have 25 stations, they had 40 stations approved. What can two stations do? So that was that. So and so that's where I was really good. Well, let me tell you a secret which um, I myself tried to find out. Uh, I don't know whether I was kicked out or I was pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> whether I was moved out or pulled out. You know what I mean? That is something you'll never know. And something you'll have to find out after trying it. But each of those uh, moves I made was terrible to a lot of people at the beginning, but wonderful to everybody after that. <laughs> Thank you. you know, um, I think you're asking why you chose sports from media to sports. Why? Yeah, because... Yeah, why you chose sports? I'm uh, sorry, sports from media. Yeah, that's why. Because Astro. Because of Astro. So you answer the question? Because Astro was coming in. As the whole media landscape was going to change, he saw it. Okay. Next question. Hi, Tanshu. Hi, My name is Sean. Uh, actually, I'm just about to finish my studies for supply chain. <coughs> So I'm just wondering, or I have two questions actually. Um, so what are the prospects do you think of in terms of supply chain management? And also my second question is about, uh, maybe it's not total relevant to ports, but as recent, I, I'm working in a manufacturing company, so recently there's a few issues with uh, like hunting issues, um, those container or forwarders that are having trouble with financial troubles. So do you think it will actually affect the entire chain itself or um, in terms of business-wise or whether it will affect the ports or um, say the logistics part of things? Sean, so, where are you from? Which school? Which college? Or uh, what was some open uni? Oh good, you know about Hanjin and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. To tell you two things. Surprise chain is a good discipline to get into and a good um, Good thing to study because the project is going to be here. 
in terms of uh, everybody's needs. And more and more companies are outsourcing everything. For example, like Mercedes, uh, I mean, no, no, Mercedes, Marks and Spencer's has never produced anything. You know? Yet they have a big retail store. So, but they also don't store a lot of the stuff. They let stock keepers keep it. You know? But coming to hygiene and gang, let me tell you, that's one of the worries that the previous guy was asking whether I had any, any worries. When I first started, there were 300 shipping lines. Soon, it became 200. Then it became 100. And now we're talking about 35, 40 shipping lines. And, but the shipping lines have a big problem. And the freight rates are going up, they build like crazy. And they make assumptions that volumes is going to be big and they, 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 can build, they can build bigger bigger ships. And then it's run by a few guys who are more interested in market share than in terms of profits. <laughs> right? But this business of the shipping lines going bankrupt is nothing new. Let me tell you that 10 years ago, MERS bought overseas land, which belongs to Americans. And then Hapak Roy and Red Roy both joined up, and MERS bought over all the four of them. In our country, we had MIC container lines. That also pro shop. But who's the parent? Petronas. So if Petronas can't afford it, who can afford it? You know? And lately, Tomasek in Singapore sold ABL. If Tomasek can, can't afford a shipping line, then who in the world can afford it? Right. So, the problem is because oversupply, undercutting, etc. But I don't think any of you knows. You know what the cost of sending a box to Hong Kong? Anybody? Twenty dollars. Twenty US. Yes. All right. Because, because they go, they want it to be have enough boxes to go collect the boxes from Hong Kong. <coughs> so the return journey will be profitable. So they don't mind this. So that's the kind of practices. Of it. And uh, everybody does that. And very. I, I've been. In, in, talking to them in the last 20 years and I've been trying to find out what the hell they're trying to do. But I, I'm telling you that they have their own systems and their own mechanics and their own forecasts. All right? So that's what it is. So, would it, this Hanji collapsing, would it like affect it or it's just another one of the shipping line consolidation? No, you see that. <coughs> Maybe what I should need to tell you is MERS and Hapak Roy and all of them from Europe, all right? Japan has an NYK Mitsui OSK. Evergreen has got, um, I mean, Taiwan has Evergreen, Yanhai, Wanhai and all that, all right? Then China, I mean, Hanjin, Hanjin, and Hyundai, Hanjin, and KTMC. Right? But China has got WCL, Costco, and China Shipping Line. So you notice that each of these titles, dragons in the vice, huh, have their own shipping line. No? But the rest of the world, there are no shipping lines. Right? In South Asia, we don't have anybody who has his own shipping line. All of South Asia and India, they don't have a shipping line. So it's, it's going to be the question is going to be how do you make the shipping lines rationalize between productivity and weights and become profitable? So <laughs> the only answer is the weak get killed, the strong get bigger. That's all. Okay. Next question. This one minute. Yeah. Gentlemen, 
Thanks, Ray. Uh, my name is Fatos from fatoshome.com. Uh, just now you mentioned about three values in entrepreneurship. Number one, profit. Number two, passion. Number three, compassion. I understand about profit and uh, passion. But can you please elaborate a little bit more about what do you mean by compassion? Thank you, sir. I think before that, I'd have to tell you. If you don't have passion for anything, <coughs> don't do it. You must have passion for it. But compassion means looking at the staff, looking at the family, looking at the immediate surrounding. And you must be concerned about everybody, not just them. And for example, like I showed you the minimum salary, I can also pay thousand dollars. I can also <laughs> employ a lot of foreign workers. All right? But you must believe in what you want to do. And my minimum wage is at least 2005. No? I don't know why everybody is into it. Uh, I mean, uh, arguing about the minimum wage. All right? But you see that the company that, if, for example, if you stand the law and think wages should be 20% of all everybody's salary, have everybody's profits, then you find a big change in the system. But you don't have to wait for those figures. And let me tell you that um, in addition to the payback time, it's also important. All right? So we do a lot of uh, donations to the public in all the day. So, and we have a scheme where we identify, we told our staff, go and find a, go and find a neighbor who's having a problem. <laughs> and you become the hero in the whole, whole community. <laughs> so we make the top, we put CSR from not only the company, not the departments, but the individuals can do CSR as well. So the whole company becomes CSR oriented. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll come back to the end of it. Yeah. Come back to you. Hello. Hi, uh, Calvin here. Uh, yes. Thank you for the speech and thank you for the talk for what you've done for us today. Um, I'm actually from uh, forwarding industry itself. So, uh, this next question would be. Uh, what's the next frontier in the logistics industry? Specifically speaking, with the adv advent of the government initiatives, right, where they are trying to upgrade the the declarations and also the processes of, you know, declaring the goods out of the port of Malaysia. What do you see foresee the the shift in terms of the industry itself, technology wise? Mm -hmm. Technology-wise, we have to be very specific. You see, when your container is 30 pounds and you you try to declare it at 20 to escape the duty or the freight rates, etc., then it causes problems of the container, the ship that carries the boxes. So we have to make sure that the container we weighing system is correct. And um, a lot, of, a lot more regulations are only coming about because of the problem with terrorism and such and So you just have to be more disciplined. And um, so, and I think if you run an airport, it's going to be even tougher. Right? So all these regulations are necessary because of the circumstances in which we are living. Right? And we just have to make sure that we overcome them. Right. Okay, time for last two questions. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, Rick. I'm Edward. I'm from a human resource development company. I liked in particular what you said staff is king, customer is queen. So I would like uh, a to share on how did you prepare your staff to be king? That means how do you grow them to become king so that they can serve the queens? Thank you. How do you motivate the staff? How do you motivate the staff? Prepare the staff yeah. to become king. Very simple. Uh, just call them king. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them all your kings. 
and basically treat them as that one. And pass the, pass the buck to them and say the shipping man will come because of what? Because of our productivity, because of what we do, what we achieve. So we turn through all these ideas to them and make them feel responsible for it. Important as far as they're concerned. But also we change the shipping lines to to, to Queens because there are only 35 shipping lines. We don't have, we can't say customer is king. And how many customers do you have? 35. <laughs> you know what I mean? So make the king the, the top, the king better. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, um, Tansriji. You have a wonderful name. I mean, that's the way we, we call someone with respect, with a G at the back. So, my name is uh, Billy. I'm unfortunately uh, I come from the same town that you grew up in. So I come from Palakula as well. Oh, Palakula. Oh, yes. So good town. <laughs> I have two questions. One is, um, I'm not sure whether you've heard of collapsible containers. Um, you know, I met someone many years ago who was really trying very hard to sell this idea and you know to get it into the manufacturing space. But you know, I don't think anything has happened. So I just want to hear your thoughts about that, how that's going to change the landscape in the um, the shipping industry. And my second question, I would like to you know hear your perspective. I think we all here. Everyone has concerns about, you know, the future of this country. Um, I would like to hear your thoughts, you know, of how do we, how would you, how do you to take that information of what's happening around and, you know, how can we also learn from your, um, your, your insights into that? Thank you. You want to have an opinion, his opinion on what's the future of this country? No, just your personal, you know, take on this. I'm not asking you to look into the crystal ball and, you know, tell us what's happened, what, what the future is going to be, but your take into it, yeah. First is on collapsible containers. On oh, collapsible containers, I think, the idea is collapsible. <laughs> because they could not, they eventually realize that continents have to be solid, have to be uh, steel based and everything else. And, and so that's why we never really took off. It's a good, it's a good idea. It's a great idea, but it's not practical. Uh, and not uh, cost efficient as well. Now, but how do I take, how do I take, um, take on the future of the country? Uh, uh, I don't have an, I don't have a Facebook, so that saves me a lot of time. <laughs> I don't subscribe to a lot of people other than, other than the star. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But I read a lot of, I spend a lot of time on magazines. Well, and not so much books, but magazines. And I, I make sure every day I have something to read. And, and uh, I think the problem in the world, I must say this to my kids as well, the problem in this world is actually Facebook. <laughs> They all spend too much time on Facebook listening to all kinds of rubbish and all kinds of nonsense around and you get depressed for no reason or no reason. And that's one I'm not joking to any one of you. I don't think I've ever seen me in the Facebook. Okay? Right. So I'm one of the the last of the Mohicans uh, who don't use the Facebook. Maybe the chance, uh, I don't know. <coughs> Uh, does it answer your question? Yeah, I think that's yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. One last question. That's it. Okay. Tansri, thank you uh, for spending your time with us. Um, my question is, um, what do you do during your free time? I mean, what do you have free time? Or are you always thinking of business? <laughs> no, I have no free time. I got five grandsons. 
and being an Occupy millionaire. <laughs> and uh, so, now I don't think of business all the time. But, for example, when you're on a flight, on your watching programs, especially on the, in, in, when you're on a flight, now you can get to see a lot of magazines. You know? So I, I read a lot of magazines, and that's when the ideas come. And uh, I don't know whether I'm a copycat or a blotting paper. No, I, I think more blotting paper. <laughs> I copy down everything. And I try and think of how can it apply to other people or to my own research, etc. So all the time reading. Uh, the, the last one I read was, there was one magazine on um, Business Week. 50 new technological improvements in all other industries. You read about every one of them. It gives you ideas. A lot of good ideas come from magazines. Right, so that's why, that's why I told you all I, uh, I study only after the university. You know? And that is, that's not a joke, okay? That's a real. <laughs> okay, I think, yeah, so we are down. I mean, thank you very much, Jason and Kelvin. Thank you very much, Dan Sri, Mr. Shah, and also thank you everybody for your interesting questions. <laughs> May I now invite Mr. Shah Lingam to present a token of appreciation to our guest speaker today, Dan Sri Ji Yana Lingam. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's Power Talk session. Once again, a big thank you and a round of applause, please, for our guest speaker, Yamper Mahagya, Dan Sri Ji, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being part of this morning session. We hope to see you again at the next Power Talks. Thank you, and have a great day.